Now, the CDC, Center for Disease Control, estimates that a, a pandemic happens every 25 to 30 years. So if we had one now, and the last one was uh, more than 30 years ago, if we had one now, it would not be unusual, it wouldn't be out of the norm. And I want you to remember this, when God's not giving you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind, use your sound mind to understand that we've had pandemics before, we've survived them, the stock market survived them, people have lived through them. It's tragic for those who suffer in that pandemic, but for most of us, life goes on, and it will go on even if this turns into a pandemic. Johns Hopkins also says, and I think this is an important thing, and we've got a, a chart on this. Johns Hopkins says that our nation is the best prepared nation, the best prepared nation in the world. President Trump mentioned this in his news conference yesterday with Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar and Vice President Pence. The Center for Disease Control is at work. We are the best prepared. The president asked for $2.5 billion worth of funding to deal with this crisis. And the Congress said, maybe we should give you $8 billion. He said, bring it on. Whatever you give me, we'll use it to address the crisis. We trust the Congress. So if you look at the country's best prepared and worst prepared, China was ranked 51st prepared, North Korea 193, Somalia 194, Equatorial Guinea 195, but the U.S. number one, the U.K. number two, and Netherlands number three. So we are as prepared as any nation in the world to deal with a pandemic of this sort. Now, if you can believe China, maybe, maybe the recovery so far have begun to overtake the number of new illness infections. And that's really good news if it's true. So let's look, here's a, here's a chart. Coronavirus recoveries have overtaken new cases. We have new confirmed cases. There's this one massive spike where China changed the way they were reporting it. And then it came back and it's kind of bouncing along in the, in the uh, 2,500 or less category. But the number of patients who we declare recovered is now exceeding the number of new cases. That could be good news. There's two caveats. Remember, there is a potential for reinfection, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. There are 14 cases where people appeared to have been cleared of the disease and then later were tested and shown to be reinfected, or maybe the infection didn't clear entirely. And the second thing is the vast majority of these statistics come from China. I'm not sure that we can trust them. But if we can, there's potential really good news on the horizon, and it does appear that China is beginning to go back to work. Now, let's talk about the impact of the threat. We know the nature, let's talk about the impact of the threat. We've already seen a massive impact in the stock market. You know, the Dow Jones Industrial Average was flirting with 30,000. It was at new all-time highs just 10 days ago. Today, today, it dipped below 26,000 before it bounced. That is one massive decline in a very short period of time. In fact, it is the fastest decline from all-time highs in the history of measuring the stock market to so lose 10% that fast. Now, impacts will be felt in four areas that could affect you. The economic impact, the market impact, the health impact, and the political impact. And we'll talk about each of those.